This is part 37 of the Stuart Major Beam Engine Rebuild. Here I'm fitting the flywheel and about to give it an initial test run. What I'm doing with the flywheel first is scraping off with a piece of brass the surplus paint that went everywhere when I painted it. And as most of you have seen me painting, you'll see how much painting there was to do on this. Finally, I'm finishing it off with a piece of Scotch Brite. This wonderful material is like an abrasive scouring pad and removes all remnants of the old paint. I do think there are one or two anomalies on this engine, and the main one is the way that the flywheel and the pulley and everything else is held to the crankshaft. On an engine of this size, with a massive flywheel like this, I would have thought that a keyway would have been more sensible, but it's not so. It's just a couple of opposing groove screws that pinch onto the crankshaft, and in this case it's a little bit difficult because the flywheel itself is slightly a rattle fit on the crankshaft. I intend to have a look at this, I may put some paint down the centre of it, but it's looking good really, I'm managing to get it fairly accurate. I'll mess around with this and you'll see what happens in the next episode. For the moment I'm just keen to get it running. The engine is still quite tight, so 20 psi should make it go I think. And surprisingly for a first run, it's really not that bad. There's a bit of a knocking noise coming from the cylinder end, I'll look into that in due course. There's plenty of power in the engine, which is the main thing, as there was none at all before. By having a quick feel at the entablature, which is the horseshoe shaped piece, I can see that something is actually tapping on that, so I'll look into that as well. I can hear that the valve timing is slightly out at one end. That's easily put right by just adjusting the valve itself. If you watch this next bit, you'll see that at one end of the stroke, the timing is a little bit premature. It's definitely a little bit premature, it's trying to go the other way. So all I need to do is adjust the valve, and that will put that right. The creaking that you can hear is my weight on the chair. I have a very old chair in the workshop, and it creaks a bit as I move around on it. I'll take this opportunity to use some scotch Bright and get some more paint off the flywheel. You can see the little bit of run out on the flywheel. This is just down to getting the grub screws right, so I'm not worried about that. The final episode will show the finished product, as close as I can get it. Plus I'll show you what I did with the corners of the brickwork. Valve timing on the steam engine is very very important. Early admission is the best way to go. Most steam engines use late admission and the flywheel limps over top dead centre and then gets a kick on its way by the admitted air or steam. You can hear that the timing's out by the noise that the engine makes, it's going 1-2, 1-2, 1-2. And after I time the engine perfectly, it sounds like this. So the engine's timed perfectly and we still have the knock at the cylinder end. But I do know what this is. That's the parallel motion that needs adjusting. So after I adjusted the parallel motion to the correct setting, the engine sounds like this. Ah, that's more like it. The engine's running much better now. It's running in harmony with itself. Nothing's knocking and it's running very well indeed to say the thing is still quite tight. Once the engine beds in, the slow running will improve, but it is capable of quite slow running now. I'll leave the engine running for a while, just so that you can see the poetry in motion, which is a beam engine. And that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful.